Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today we want to talk about another NAS. Here we are at IFA 2024 in Berlin. And let's face it, all I've come here for is the NAS and the data storage. And I struck it lucky pretty early doors. This, we're going by the flyer, is the ZLab. They're working on a four system series of AI supported NAS devices. Utilizing a familiar architecture of a four, two six bays and an eight bay, this system's rocking out with 10 GBE network ports, a couple of them. It, depending on the configuration you go for, some of the smaller ones, according to this flyer, uh, arrive with 2.5 GBE and 10 GBE. Uh, but the larger ones, the six and the eight bay, the Pro Series, they do arrive with 10 GBE and dual USB 4 connectivity. Now, what's interesting about this is it would be very easy to look at a brand like this and come in close, Eddie, come in, come in move my microphone so we don't break anything. Uh, this system here has also got its own operating system internally. They're not going to be going Unraid or True NAS. They're integrating their own with an AI assistant. Now, going by the notes, again, I've literally just arrived there. There's no one else here. We could probably steal this, but we're not going to. Uh, it arrives with an AI co-pilot built in there. And alongside that, going by the notes, not only have we got support of a couple of different CPU configurations, ranging from uh, the, let's go for it there, the RK3588, uh, which is a 6 TPO uh, TOPS NPU supported AI model. On top of that, we've got an Intel Ultra 5, a 12.5H Intel CPU there. Again, I believe that it's a 14 core. I might be wrong, correct me in the comments. I think it's a 20 lane processor as well. And with different configurations of memory, expandable maximum, uh, starting at 16 gig and ending at 96 gig for those Intel higher um, i5 processors. Now, obviously, AI is the buzzword. It's getting thrown around this trade show quite a lot. The holy grail of network attached storage, I think for users that are looking at this as an in-house AI, is having a trained in-house, non-internet connected AI that only utilizes the data you put in. Now, the people I've told you thus far is, this is where they're trying to go with that. But there's still not complete clarity of just how far that is on a internet connected level. Now, if we talk about the hardware, coming a bit closer there already, it is, uh, this is the six bay model, and I'm gonna be straight with you. These are some of the biggest frigging hard drive trays I've ever seen. Eddie pulled one of these out earlier on. I could live in that. Um, inside, we've also got M2 NVMe slots with the smaller RK CPU models with a single M.2 slot, but the beefier Intel L5s having a Gen 4, two Gen 4 times four slots internally for that faster processing. Now again, whether it is you're looking at this, you know, as a NAS that you're going to slam through NAS on, or a NAS that you're going to use their own OS, there is nothing wrong with super fast PCIe Gen 4 SSD slots inside for AI processing. It's a lovely fast data recovery. Now, in, on the back here, we've got some normal sort of boring USB 2 ports, who cares, an HDMI port if they support it. But, and hopefully there's something on screen, we'll overlay it, we've also got the 10 GBE connections. Dual 10 GBE, but thanks to that support of USB 4 ports there on the front, that's also going to mean, hopefully, network connectivity that way. We're seeing increasing numbers of units roll out of the gate with network IP support on USB 4, thanks to Thunderbolt 4 connection, and therefore, this could actually be connected to via two 10 GBEs and theoretically, you have before connected users. For simultaneous users, which makes this potentially, I'm gonna to have to keep saying that word, a phenomenal editing solution. Now, all of this aside, I am getting whispers this might be a crowdfunding product. This might be a product that's coming to Kickstarter that I know is not gonna be for everyone. We're seeing an increasing number of solutions utilizing Kickstarter as a means of marketing pre-existing products. I mean, look behind me, Ed, bring it in. We've already got pre-completed units here in retail packaging. That's not a bad thing. That is a very, very good sign. That at least it's a legitimate product, but that still doesn't mean that buying this on a crowdfunding site is gonna be the same as going traditional retail. So do keep that in mind. But I'm liking what I'm seeing. Now, what I'm gonna do after this video is I'm hopefully gonna find out a few more words to have for the guys here to find out more about it. Now, what you're seeing here is the local GUI via the web browser, and there's an app as well. But the first thing to keep in mind is you're looking at the search here. This is being entered into the main GUI. We are doing a search in human language. Photos taken by Sony cameras in 2024. And this is what it finds. And that finder you're seeing there is not Mac Finder. That's their own file manager that's built into the GUI. Heavily stylized from Finder, of course. And none of these designs seem to be final but it was able to find a lot of what I searched for there using human language. Yes, we could achieve it with filters, but it's nice to do it with human language. Next up, songs with lyrics containing the lyric, and then we discussed it briefly, and then we put in time after time. Now that's important because 
when you're uploading audio files onto here, the fact that the LLM is scanning for the lyrics on these files means that we can find some of that text information while taking advantage of human language via the LLM tool, that localized AI deployment for the LLM with no internet access. And we'll get into later on proof that it's not connected. But for example, looking for running dogs, not just dogs, but the ability to use different adjectives within the search terms all worked here. Web sources is something I didn't really explain enough whether these were things that were being accessed via remote access because we didn't fully physically disconnect it till later. But the fact that you could upload files directly into it and then the indexing would take place in the background or look for similar images would all be done utilizing that local LUM. AI photo recognition isn't new, but the ability to inject human commands uh, with that LLM to do so with just a local access certainly has benefits. And I think business users that want to take advantage of human language to you know, source files via their multiple categories without needing larger text speak or searching spreadsheets or just understanding more about database speech are going to find this very beneficial. And particularly businesses, again, who don't want to use remote access internet LLMs for classified information. Now, we spent a bit more time looking at the files and some of the images and some of it there in the background. And you could add some of those individual um, categories if you wanted to, whether it was that you wanted to do searches within searches. So for example, if you wanted to search for specific kinds of buildings within just general buildings, you could do so. And this categorized, again, way beyond just photos. You could do this with videos, with music and more. And that kind of um, spreading of what you could do utilizing human language was quite good and we went into a little bit of detail as you can see with some of the domestic class sharing and stuff like that <laughs> and those files that you could share very very easily you know just like you could on any nas but a lot of this stuff outside of the localized ai deployment was stuff that i wasn't sure about because the software i spent more time studying the local llm deployment than i did looking at the os itself because it felt frankly the rest of it a little early days but moving on to video here we can see a file here titanium.mp3 is a file that's being uploaded here this was when if the uh, video had images had text they claimed that they uh, their ai the llm tool would crawl all of this whether it is text that has been entered into it or when the file had been pre-scanned and that would allow a user to be able to crawl that video information again for relevant data. We'll return real quickly in a moment to audio, but as you can see, because of um, the videos and the audio data there having the transcription services, again, the LLM had access to that. None of this is new. They're not building learning language models themselves, but the fact of the matter is being able to do this on a local system without internet connectivity is important and useful. And moreover, for all of the brands that I've seen at IFA 2024 that have spoken about locally deployed LLMs for business, that therefore means they can take advantage of these tools without the risk of data being compromised via an external connection, this was the only brand at the show that showed it in practice on their hardware. We saw multiple brands, Ugreen as well, they were probably one of the loudest talking about this feature for 2025 on their new system, but they couldn't show it off in practice. Yet this smaller team was able to do so. Moving forward from this, we got them to sort of give us a little bit more of a demo of the software if we move forward, and we went into document scanning. This is something that businesses are going to like. Now, say you've got databases of everything from eBooks to resource materials, all loaded onto the system. Uh, doc Q and A's will allow you, in this case, what is Zeta Labs company value or what they're worth, you're able to utilize that locally deployed LLM to, um, cater um, to resource information that's on the system already. So again, not using external resources unless you chose to do so. Keeping in mind, you don't need to have this system and this um, LLM, slash, LLM slash AI tool if you don't want to. You could even configure it quite well and choose which directories it could and could not access. But there's some things that concerned me and Ed. So for example, using the LLM to create or modify an admin account, 
that is not something I want to see on this system if and when it rolls out the gate. If this does come to market, crowdfunding or otherwise, I don't want the AI to have superpower use like we're seeing here on screen. They did state this is all very early days and you can change things a lot and you know nothing set in stone, but I wouldn't want such easy access and control to also um, allow a user, bad or good, or the AI's um, LLM itself to compromise the system so easily. But this aside, something that will be subject to change, the fact that you can have databases of information from years of email docs to company reference data to even ebooks, and just ask the system to tell you who is Romeo, where is such a book set, tell me in my libraries all the books on this subject in human language is going to be attractive to a lot of users there. But what about that offline access? So I asked them to have the system here in front of me with complete remote access disconnected. The physical connection was not present, no internet services were going into the system or the local laptop that was accessing this. It could try to do stuff, but it couldn't access the server at all. And then we started doing searches on the in-system data, as we can see here, photos of flying birds, checking inside the system, and there is their own file explorer there, it's not Mac Finder, and it was still able to utilize those. Now again, image recognition isn't new, but asking it in a human-friendly way on a local NAS with no internet access is new. And as you can see, what is the local, what is the company value of Zeta Lab? It was able to utilize the local assets, not remote access um, assets, to answer these queries. And that went down to the modifications, controlling the NAS with human level controls, human words, I should say, to open and open files, go into settings menus. All of this was human usage. Again, the big point here isn't that they are making AI, because they're not. It is a locally deployed utility of LLM controls so that someone that doesn't know tech speak doesn't need to know tech speak. So they can utilize their server catalog access and retrieval in the most human way possible. There will be a written video, uh, article link below over on NAS compared to a lot more images, a lot more information and all of this lovely information we're stealing off of this flyer here. There's also numerous injected SD card slots here. So we've got a standard TF, SD3 and SD4 injection there on the front. Come closer again, Eddie, just to bring that in. We've even got an LCD panel there. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next video of all the solutions that we're finding out about, not just in NAS, but realistically in NAS, here at IFA 2024 in Berlin. Remember the article below. And other than that, see you on the next video.